We're in the ocean of Southeast Asia and getting ready to search for a fish that lives in a place so dangerous that most other fish won't even come near it. Ready? Let's go diving. And after a bit of searching, I finally found it. The clownfish, or anemone fish as it's also called. The beautiful tentacles of the anemone are actually deadly to most fish. The tentacles have stinging organs called nematocysts, which fire tiny darts into fish that brush by. This stinging ability protects anemones from predators and helps them capture prey for food. But how can clownfish hide in such a dangerous place? Well, that's because clownfish have a symbiotic relationship with anemones that is so important that clownfish are almost always found among anemones. Symbiotic relationships are interactions between two species that can benefit either one or both species. Symbiotic relationships are divided up into three major categories. Parasitism benefits one species while the other is harmed. Like ticks, for example. There are many examples here in the ocean. Take parasitic fish lice, for example, that cling to a host fish and feed on its body fluids. Amazingly, fish will sometimes find a cleaner fish or a cleaner shrimp to help remove the parasites from their scales, mouth and gills. When this happens, a mutualistic relationship is formed between the fish and the cleaner organism. Mutualism is a symbiotic relationship in which both species benefit from the relationship. This bird here eats the tick, which benefits the cow. In our fish example, the host fish is clean off its parasites and the cleaner fish gets a free meal. Both species benefit, but not the sea lice anymore. Hey, I already brushed my teeth today! <laughs> the third symbiotic relationship is commensalism. Commensalism benefits one organism, but the other one is neither harmed nor helped. You might have had a bug hitchhiking on you at some point without knowing it. An example here in the ocean is when remoras hitch a ride on sharks, big rays or turtles. The remora attaches itself with a disc on its head and then hitch a ride and feed off the food scraps that the host animal leave behind. So the sharks are not affected by the remoras being there, but the remoras get a free ride and a free meal. Sounds good to me. So back to our clownfish. Clownfish are protected from predators by living among anemones and in exchange the clownfish chase away fish and other animals that could harm the anemone. What kind of symbiotic relationship is this? That's right, mutualistic. Okay, but we still have one important question to answer. How can the clownfish be immune to the anemone sting? Well, a clownfish must first get used to this host anemone by developing a protective mucus coating. Kind of like when we use sunscreen. And there are two possible explanations for how this happens. The first explanation is that the clownfish secretes its own mucus, which lacks the substance that makes the anemone fire the stinging nematocyst. It's as if the clownfish had a protected force field or invisible cape. And the second explanation is that the clownfish uses mucus produced by the anemone. The unprotected clownfish initially touches the anemone with its fins, even getting stung slightly at first but over time gains the protective mucus coating. The symbiotic relationships happen everywhere, even in our own bodies. Did you know that every time you eat yogurt, you're actually filling up your digestive tract with symbiotic bacteria? That's right, you become the host for these natural bacteria, and they help you process and digest the food that you eat every day. All right, so next time you go outside, stop and look around and see how many symbiotic relationships you can spot around you and record what they are. And remember, never stop exploring your world.